Ethologies, the study of animal behavior, made you mostly to find out why animals are doing things. Obviously, behavior is adaptive. It's been selected during evolution, at least genetically based behavior, has been selected during evolution to keep the animal alive within its natural habitat. There is absolutely no sense in talking about ethology on domestic animals. You have to look at animals in their natural habitat. Looking at animals in domestic habitats, you have to have a norm to compare it with. Uh, ethology isn't the study of domestic animals and their problems. That's applied ethology, clinical ethology if you like, but it's not ethology. What we study here is ethology. There are quite a lot of free living horses. Yes, and there are in Britain too, native ponies are bred like that, but they don't leave the right number of stallions. They, the, the crop, the product of the, of the whole breeding operation is the colt foal, so they take them off. Also, they're frightened that stallions will, will fight each other. You're usually left with one stallion for 20 or 30 mares, and that changes the population enormously. Um, stallions don't have enough interaction with their cult foals. Even when a stallion is brought up in those conditions, he hasn't really had the guidance, the example of his father, as he would do in a, a not more natural herd. Also, they feed them, and that changes things. And they give them supplementary food, and that introduces competition which is not natural, and that provokes much more aggression. What happens is that some of them learn very rapidly that aggression pays good rewards, so they become more aggressive. So that you get these, what are really like peck orders in hens, which people misunderstand as being dominant hierarchies, and we're back into the altered behaviour that domestic horses show. This is not natural behaviour. They don't, ours do not compete. My question is, there is, is there leadership? And if there is leadership, is there a constant or fixed leader? Because there is this idea of a lead mayor that I believe is very extended. Because everywhere you go, they say there is a lead mayor and she leads the group. And I was trying to see if I can see this uh, in feral horses. No one actually counted the times. Someone started the movement and whether or not the rest follow. And what did you find? Well, I couldn't find any proof of leadership. I couldn't find any constant leader. So you could see one mare on front going somewhere and the rest follow or not. So you don't have a pattern, a fixed pattern on, well, this mare is always going and the rest are always following. This is something I could not find. So I cannot say there is a leadership as far as I can. All days I've been here watching horses. I haven't seen one proof of this uh, lead mare or lead stallion, whatever you want, uh, proof of that this is true. So why do you think that this notion is so common? Because people look at domestic horses and then the behavior is different, mostly because there is a focal points of food and then you get the hungry ones or the more eager to get the food fighting for it and normally the rest of the horses just say well if you're gonna kick me for it then go and it appears that it's always the same horse but in, then if you look at when it's no food then it might be another horse that start the movement so can you say that's leadership I, I wouldn't there is no scientific proof, no data that could prove this uh, idea or this uh, theory of the lead mare. What sounds a good story in a book is, is written by people who, who haven't actually seen things. There are, there's a lot of fantasy written about wild horses, uh, about alpha-dominant mares and leaders and 
all this stuff. You just don't see it. And I can't convince people because everybody else is saying that it did, but when they come and see, they go, well, of course, it's obvious.